Hi, I'm Kristen Oviedo, and this is the buoyancy to weight ratio in boating. So buoyancy is a really hard concept to grasp, but we're going to start grasping it by defining something called density. I'm sure you've heard the word before, but it's just useful to remember that it's mass over volume. So it's a quantity that's not only going to reflect how massive something is, but how much space it takes up. And that's going to be crucial for our discussion right now. So I started by drawing us a pool of water and defining the density of that water, which is going to be one gram per centimeter cubed. The rule of thumb for floating is that if something is less than the density of water, it will float. If it's the same, it will just kind of hang out neutral at any level that you put it at. And if it's more dense than water, it will sink. So let's say we have a big old block of lead and it's just like a solid cube. Its density is, let's just say it's, I don't know, six, something like that. It's going to sink. So let's say that we mold that somehow so that it kind of has a bowl shape. So, you know, we're going to do something like this sort of. So this is no longer six because now we have to take into account the air that's inside of this little pocket. So let's say that it's, I don't know, uh, three fourths. So that means that it will float. Let's say that we kind of mold it and kind of shrink that little air cavity so it's a little bit smaller. So our density is one. So this isn't going to float or sink. It'll stay at the top of the water if you put it there, but it would also stay just right in the middle of the water if you put it there as well. This would float. So essentially what it comes down to is trying to figure out the density of whatever object you're dealing with and figuring out whether it's greater or less than water. So I started with steel because steel or you know any sort of metal is gonna be too dense to float. But by shaping it the right way, and decreasing its density by changing the volume, we can make it buoyant. So when we're talking about the buoyancy to weight ratio, we've kind of snuck up on it here. Basically, it always has to be greater than one because this always is going to be the number that you're trying to calculate this quantity with. So there's a lot of textbook definitions about buoyancy specifically. But I like to think of buoyancy as the ability of an object to push water out of the way. And however much water it's going to push out of the way by you know, being in the water, that's going to be equivalent to the buoyant force. So gravity is always acting on all objects. So basically the question is, is gravity down or buoyancy up going to uh, take effect? Which one's going to outweigh the other? So for this one, gravity wins. For this one, buoyancy wins. And for this one, they cancel each other out perfectly. So again, that also ties back to the buoyancy to weight ratio always being positive. I'm Kristen Oviedo, and that is the buoyancy to weight ratio in boating.